On this episode of today's Shopsmith, we're getting ready for a summer project building and an upcoming road trip. We'll make sure our equipment is checked out, tuned up, and ready to hit the road. We'll also be building a backyard project the entire family will enjoy all summer long. You're not going to want to miss any of this one. Well, as you can see, we made it through what seemed to be an exceptionally long winter. Uh, you saw we had budding trees, now we got green grass. It's a long ways from the snow that was out there. Not all that long ago, but we're now about two or three weeks into a spring. Great time to get out in the shop, take a look at the machinery, get it ready for some uh, heavy use this summer. Of course, any time your machine has sat dormant for any length of time at all, it's probably going to need some maintenance. It could be something as simple as uh, just checking the cord, most of the plug and inside, uh, tightening up uh, uh, fasteners that may have vibrated loose, that happens uh, quite often, or maybe more extensive maintenance like uh, putting oil in your oil ports, checking the belts. All this stuff is covered in great detail, of course, in your owner's manual. Of course, your weight tubes are always the no-brainer. You want those things waxed up frequently. Same way. But you wouldn't believe how many times I have people come up to me like at a live event and say, Mike, I've waxed and waxed my machine over and over and over. And from day one, the headstock has never seemed to slide or glide as effortlessly as yours. Well, if you're one of those that's actually waxed and waxed and waxed, maybe you need to go to the next step, and that's dialing in your tubes. Dialing in your weight tube starts with loosening a few parts and pieces. This machine has a lift assist on it, so we need to loosen the eight bolts that hold the upper bracket on. Don't have to remove it. Just loosen it. Of course, we'll need to loosen the weight tubes as well. Depending on how old your machine is, you loosen the two set screws that hold the weight tubes to the castings, both on the left side and the right side. On new machines, they're right here uh, on top of the casting, like this one. Uh, older machines, uh, you're going to have to access them from underneath. So you need to raise the machine up into drill press mode, and you get to those set screws pretty easily then. Make sure that the uh, carriage is unlocked and the headstock is unlocked. So once everything is unlocked, I'm going to put a little mark with a felt pen on each one of these tubes. You see that? You can now literally turn the tube, dial them in. You want to turn eighth at a time. Run both the headstock and the carriage down the rails. You got an area that binds, keep trying to dial it in until you spend enough time dialing this in. You'll notice that the bind is gone, or your headstock just seems to move that much better. And make sure once you're done dialing in your weight tubes, you lock everything back down. Today's Shopsmith with Michael Young is the show dedicated to the do-it-yourselfer, hobbyist, and shopsmith enthusiast. Every episode is filled with advice and practical tips and techniques for maximizing your woodworking results. See how to improve your projects both large and small by increasing your tools capabilities while improving your woodworking skills, skills that lead to quality and results, Visit today's Shopsmith with Michael Young, watch an episode, and then subscribe to this channel. S Subscribers are the first to be introduced to the newest Shopsmith innovations, products, and inside information about everything Shopsmith. Don't miss a single episode of today's Shopsmith with Michael Young. Subscribe today, and remember, your satisfaction is always guaranteed. You know, spring and summer is really one of the best times of the year to get out there and do something on our machines. Uh, lots of different types of projects for uh, springtime and summertime. Uh, we found something that seems to be one of the hottest things across the country lately. It's really taken hold in other words. Kind of started out in the Midwest, actually a little uh, argument there. Did it start in Ohio, specifically Cincinnati, 
or was it down in Kentucky? Uh, one thing for certain, its actual origins date all the way back to the 18th century. This is where uh, a farmer, Kupperman I think his name was, was watching some kids throw rocks and trying to hit it into a gopher hole. That was the very first cornhole game. So we're going to take some time, we're going to build a, a pair of cornhole boards and uh, we're going to give them away to a family that spends an awful lot of time out in their own backyard and I think they're going to enjoy this all summer long. So as usual, I hit the internet myself and just typed in cornhole boards and boy, you're not going to believe what's available. Uh, hundreds of different kinds of designs, really artistic uh, finished products. We found one that actually gave us the uh, regulation uh, measurements and scales and that's the one we're going to work from. I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll uh, set up to cut that plywood. Obviously, setting up the tables is pretty key if you're going to cut full sheets. Notice what I've done here. I've created a, an outfeed table with one of my floaters. Then I'll simply measure out what I need from the tooth of my blade to the fence. And then, keeping my eye on the fence, not on the blade, I simply feed the material through the blade. After the plywood, I went ahead and cut the uh, uh, four foot lengths and two foot lengths required for the frame itself. Well, I've got the uh, four foot pieces cut and the two foot pieces cut for the frame, plus a support piece that goes down the middle. Now I need to cut four legs, but on each end, I need to put a radius around over here. So that's what I'm getting ready to cut now on the bandsaw. Something like these legs where I got this round over. Like I say, I take them over to the bandsaw and rough cut them. But to really get them perfect, I'll always use my disc sander and sand it right to where I need it to be. Dead on. Of course, every time I use my disc sander when I'm done, I always make sure I refresh my disc by using my abrasive cleaning stick. I've got all the pieces cut and shaped. Now it's just a matter of assembling some frames and we'll take it from there. Assembly started by me cutting screw pockets on the inside of each of the frame pieces. I wanted to use screw pockets so I didn't have to go through the top. I wanted a flat flush surface. Then assembling the frame was just uh, one and a half inch wood screws, countersunk, and then filled with the uh, dowel plugs. After trimming those off, I made sure both frames were sounded well all the way around. These were gonna be visible. And after that, it was just a matter of using glue and screws to the pockets to attach the frames to the top. After the glue set, I went ahead and drilled holes through all four legs in the frames. Uh, the holes are for the hardware I'll be using, which is two and a half inch long, five sixteenths uh, carriage bolts. Well, our boards are basically done, but it is missing one major component, and that's the hole. A couple ways you can do that. You take out your compass, draw the six inch hole, six inches regulation. Drill a starter hole here and cut it out with your saber saw. What I'm going to use is something I found on Amazon. And it's this monster six inch hole saw cutter. I'm afraid this is an example of uh, you get what you pay for. This was a $16 cutter, like I said, from Amazon. Most of the time, these kind of cutters sell for $55, $65, bucks, and it really gave me some fits. Eventually, I figured out I had to cut real, real slow. Well, after I cut the holes, I actually did hit 
the holes with a round over bit. Now I'm just sanding the inside, cleaning it up a little bit. Do the same thing on the other and boards are ready to start adding some finish. Well, I put three coats of a, a water-based polyacrylic on these things and uh, they look good. What I wanted to do though was take it up a notch. So I found these uh, vinyl wraps that are made specifically for cornhole boards. That I try my hand at that. The trick here is getting it started straight. I got some lines kind of marked up here. That will hopefully help me under this first start here. Once you get it started, it's not too bad. You gotta watch for bubbles. And you go slow. Just peel the backing off three or four inches at a time at most. That's not good having wind. If you do have a problem, it does pop up fairly easily. Relay it. To do the hole, you're going to flip the board over. Then with a nice sharp X-Acto knife, you're going to trim out the center of that hole, leaving about an inch, inch and a half uh, reveal there. Then you just simply flip the board back over. Now with a hair dryer, I'm gonna heat the vinyl up around that hole. Doesn't take very long for it to get hot, but you gotta have it nice and warm to soften the vinyl. Then you just slowly work the vinyl down into the hole over the edge. You can feel the vinyl softening up. It makes it pretty easy to conform to different shapes. See how that's working? Well, there they are. Two regulation vinyl wrapped cornhole boards ready for play, which is exactly what we're going to do right after this. Well, I'm packing up and getting ready for a cross country road trip. I'm heading to Dayton, Ohio, and a visit to the factory, then it's on into Chicago. Along the way, though, I'd like to visit some of you. If you have a shop space you'd like to share with our viewers, you'd like to show us your shopman's setup and maybe even some of your favorite projects and be featured in an upcoming episode of today's shopsmith, this is your opportunity. Drop me a line at myoung at shopsmith.com. Tell me you'd like me to stop by, include a photo of your shop space if you can, and we'll be in touch. I'll bring the coffee and some great gifts for your shopsmith. You supply the workspace, the equipment, and we'll spend some real quality time talking all shopsmiths. Well, this project turned out to be way, way more fun than uh, originally anticipated. The uh, family that we gave it away to really were excited to have it. And uh, we all got involved with playing, most of us for the first time ever, this uh, strange little game. But you'll find out once you get into it, it's, it's pretty doggone addictive. I will admit uh, uh, the boys seem to have it down a little bit quicker than uh, the older folks. I even gave it a try. But man, it was a lot of fun. I actually hit a few uh, of those holes on my uh, first two or three throws. So it was a lot of fun. I hope we've inspired you to get out there this summer and do some things for yourself and for your family. I'm Michael Young, and I'll see you next time on Today's Shopsmith.